Dear friends, welcome back. In our pre previous lecture, we saw flight test of a fixed wing UAV. It was a flying wing which weighs about 1.5 kgs, 1.6 kgs approximately and with a span of 1.5 meters, right. So what do you think is the velocity of that flight? Or in other words, how to measure the velocity of that flight, right? What are the sensors that we require to measure the velocity? <laughs> and the same time the altitude, right? So what are the various methods that we can measure this velocity? One simple thing is install an onboard GPS. Right. Second thing is, you can have an IMU, inertial measurement unit, which measures the accelerations, say linear action, acceleration, and integrate these linear accelerations to get the corresponding velocity. And say, if you have a radar at the your ground station, right, by means of radar, if you have a radar at the ground station, with which you can measure the position as well as the velocity. And then we also have some sensor called fitot and static Q. Right? Here we are not going to argue about how accurate these measurements are, but these are the various sources from which we can measure the velocity. Right? Now in this lecture, let us discuss about how this, how to use this pitot-static tube to measure the velocity, right. In the first place, what is this pitot tube and static tube? Considered a hollow cylindrical tube, right, with the open mouth at one end and the closed mouth at the other end, okay. Now drill a small hole here to tap the pressure reading and connect this to a pressure sensor. Say this is my pressure sensor, right. Now let us take this setup and place it in a wind tunnel. These two lines represent the boundaries of the wind tunnel test section. Right? Now run this wind tunnel. So wind tunnel is a device in which we can produce the required velocities. Right? We can produce variable velocities of flight. Right? Here the effect is similar. Right? Either you are moving in a static air or you are holding the body and you are blowing the air, right? In both the cases, the effect is same. Now, let us run this wind tunnel to produce a velocity V infinity. Let, let, be, uh, let V infinity be the free stream velocity here. Now, let us consider point A, right? Initially, what happens as soon as you run this wind tunnel, the air will fill this tube, right, this entire apparatus. Now once the tube is completely filled, this pitot tube, right, I, I name it as pitot tube, okay. Let us assume a fluid particle which is coming from point A. So since it is in the free stream, the velocity of, of the fluid particle will be V infinity v at a is v infinity. Let us assume this fluid particle is brought to rest at point B isentropical, right, which is reversible adiabatic process. No addition 
of heat or lo losing the heat right from this setup during this process there is no addition of heat or loss of heat <coughs> now since we brought the molecule to rest at this particular fluid fluid element to rest at this point b so the velocity the corresponding velocity here will be zero right let p not be the velocity uh, pressure measured at this point p p b, b right now from the bernoulli's theorem we have p plus half rho v square is equals to constant right which is derived from the law of conservation of energy since we are not removing or adding any energy here we can apply this bernoulli's principle across this points a and b right so the pressure measured at point a b p s right so p s plus half rho v infinity square is the total pressure at point a is equals to the total pressure at point b where p not be the corresponding measured by the pressure measured by this pitot tube at point b right and what is the velocity zero right so this p not is equals to ps plus half rho v infinity square so this particular pressure corresponds to static pressure and the pressure due to flow or ve velocity is 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 known as dynamic pressure right where rho is the density of fluid right now this is the total pressure which is a summation of static pressure and the dynamic pressure here all we can measure or uh, the pressure that you measure is ultimately the total pressure here right now if you want to find the velocity of the flight vehicle you can rearrange this equation right? say this is my equation number 1 this is 2 rearranging equation 2 you get you can measure the velocity by measuring the differential pressure and the density right so from this equation i'll get the velocity in meters per second where rho the units of rho are kg per meter cube and p is in newton per meter square right now what are the quantities that i need to know if i if i want to calculate v infinity right p not ps and rho right we witness that p not is measured by this pitot tube right how about ps what exactly is this static pressure so what is air it's a mixture of gases right so we are in atmosphere which is a mixture of gases and ga gases are characterized by its is a state of matter which is loosely packed and characterized by its random motion right now due to its random motion these gases will exert a normal pressure right which is the rate of change of momentum which happens across the surface right so this pressure static pressure if you want to tap you need to measure this rate of change of momentum normal to the surface right now for this case see here at point a this pressure is known as static pressure right which we need to capture normal to the surface right let us say if i take another cylindrical tube which is also hollow but with a closed mouth okay this is with a closed mouth right and again i make a small drill at this end and tap the corresponding 
pressure by means of this pressure sensor. Fine. Now, if I have to capture this static pressure, what I need to do is to drill the holes along the surface or on the circumference of this tube. Right. So, I can tap static pressure by using this sense, the, using this setup. This particular tube that helps you to capture this static pressure is a static tube. Right. A combination of this pitot and static tube can give you a differential pressure. Right. So, once you have differential pressure and density, right. But we witnessed that this UAV is flying at different altitudes, right? So we need to know whether this density is changing with altitude or not. It is important to know that, right? So we'll look, we'll look whether the density changes with altitude or not, right? The answer is standard atmosphere. We'll go into that topic. Yeah. So now, if I can make this pitot and uh, pitot and static tube coaxial, right? So it will look something like this. If you attach this setup to your UAV, you will be able to measure the yeah, static, static and total pressure from which you will be able to find out the corresponding velocity of flight. Either you can use two separate sensors or you can have a single sensor with differential uh, which can, which can measure the differential pressure, right? Here, what you get is Ps, here, P0. Right. This is your V infinity. Now, let's have a, clo have a close look at this pitot-static tube. Right. See, this is one VTOL UAV, which we are right now working on. This was built by our team members. And I don't know whether you are able to see this pitot tube or not, but I will try to make it clear. Right? So, this is your pitot tube and there is a coaxial tube here where you have the holes on the surface with a closed mouth that is your static tube. Here you can take the static output as well as the total output and you connect it to the corresponding sensor. Right? So, if I have to accurately calculate the velocity of flight, which I can use it at a later stage to control the uh, UAV, right? So, I need to know what, should, what is the corresponding density at that particular altitude. Now, let us look at how to find density at a particular altitude. So, what is standard atmosphere? It is a mathematical model model to estimate variation no, pressure density
एंड टेम्परेचर विथ आल्टीट्यूड right now we have defined something called altitude here so there uh, there is a need now, uh, need to define it more uh, precisely right so what we use as altitude in standard atmosphere is a geometric altitude let us consider an uav right which is flying at a height h right which can be directly measured from the uav to the surface by means of the tape right so if you can able the the altitude that can be measured directly right from the from a aircraft to the sea level mean sea level or or to the ground right surface so that is the geometric altitude so there is a, there is another altitude as well right if you want to let us say if there is a satellite or another planet right if you want to find out the distance between the two planets then we have to talk in terms of their center of masses right let us say there is a planet revolving around this uh, satellite revolving around this earth or a moon revolving around the earth right now if you want to talk the distances between them we have to talk the distances between their center of masses right in that case what happens is what we need to talk is with respect to their center of masses let r be the radius of earth right and the distance between these center of masses is ha right which is known as absolute altitude this is ha so ha is hg plus r right now so researchers have performed sounding rocket as well as uh, hot air balloon experiments to to measure the temperature by varying the altitude right so this typical plot represents how the temperature varies with altitude continuous right so it is up to say 11 kilometers right initially <clears throat> the x axis here is temperature here in kelvin right y axis here is altitude h or hg you can say right so this is in kilometers okay 
So initially, uh, it is observed that there is a change with respect temperature change with respect to altitude. After a while, there is a constant temperature regions, and again there is a gradient regions, right? So as you can see, this this is like change in temperature with respect to altitude here. Although uh, the altitude is, uh, in fact, we are varying the altitude here. It was supposed to be plotted on the x-axis, but altitude is it is apt to plot along the z-axis, right here, vertically. So that's that's the only reason why it has been plotted in this way. Right. So the slope of this curve is defined as lapse rate, right? So which is again dt by dh, not dh d, dh by dt, right? It is in terms of Kelvin per kilometer or meter, right? So there are some regions where the temperature is changing with altitude, right? Those regions are known as gradient layers. Gradient layers. The regions where the temperature remained constant with altitude are known as isothermal layers. Right. So this, this goes up to, first gradient layer is up to 11 kilometers and the first isothermal layer is up to 25 kilometers and then up to 47 kilometers to 55 kilometers and so on and so forth. Right. So we are not interested in this. Why? Because we are talking about an atmospheric flight vehicle and we know even the commercial aircraft will fly up to 11 kilometers altitude, right? So what we are more interested is in this region, right? So this slope is defined as lapse rate. It's also known as, A is also known as lapse rate. which is dt by dh and the units are Kelvin per kilometer here, right? So at sea level, it is 288.16 Kelvin. This is 216.66. This corresponds to 216.66 Kelvin, right? So with this information, can we reconstruct or can we estimate density and pressure variation with respect to this altitude? Can we estimate? Yeah. So that's the idea of the standard atmosphere, right? So we'll be able to estimate it. See. Now the basis of the standard atmosphere is a hydrostatic equation, right? Consider an infinitesimal fluid element with rectangular cross sections, right? rectangular faces and unit cross sectional area. Each face is having unit cross sectional area. Right? That is, <coughs> let this face be, let us, nomen, let us label this as A and the top face be B, right? Say these two faces, it has a unit cross-sectional area and these two faces are separated by distance dhg, right? So further, since it's a fluid element, there will be forces acting on it, right? So pressure uh, because of the other fluid elements present nearby. So the force here is due to other fluid elements is P into, yeah, let us say on bottom face it is P into cross section area is 1, P into 1, right? What about this? Let this, let the force acting on this, on the face B is P plus dP, right? Further assume that this fluid element is at rest, okay? So when we say it is at rest, it is at equilibrium, say the forces, this is your z-axis and this is your x-axis. So the forces acting along positive z, I mean along this z are positive and acting opposite to this z, I mean, yeah, it's negative. So what, what is this upset here is equals to zero, that implies minus of p plus dp, right? plus P 
plus there is a weight of this fluid element right which is acting downwards so that weight is mass into acceleration due to gravity and since we are talking about a fluid element it is apt to talk in terms of density and volume right let rho be the density and what is the volume of this fluid element yeah volume of this fluid element is dv is 1 into 1 into dhg right this is the volume of this fluid rho into dhg so, minus rho d rho minus g into rho into dhg is equals to zero this implies dp is equals to minus dp is equals to min, minus rho g d h g right so this is my equation 1 but if you observe here uh, what we are interested in like coming back to this question like why we are doing this even we want to know how the density is varying with altitude right so if i integrate this equation i'll get to know what is the variation of pressure with respect to altitude given how rho is a function of altitude but we should not miss that g is also a function of altitude right yeah so what we need to for the sake in order to ease this integration otherwise let us take one more step right we have equation of state right what is equation of state which is valid everywhere p is equals to rho r t right divide these two equations so dp by t is equals to minus g t h g by r t right now if i integrate this i'll get variation of pressure with respect to altitude but the issue is there is a change uh, variation of temperature with respect to altitude yeah now that that we can figure it out from this gradient layer and isothermal layer but how about these two parameters is g is also a function of altitude here right now now we have to define new altitude called geopotential altitude in order to ease this integration let us now define a new fictitious altitude called geopotential altitude right so what is that so dp the same equation here equation 1 can also be written as minus rho g not dh So this is my equation number four. If I name it as three, right? So this also represents the same pressure, right? At that point, so equation one and four represents the pressure at the same point. But what is the difference here? In order to ease the integration, we have defined a new altitude called geopotential altitude (dh). H is a geo potential altitude which physically does not exist, it is a fixtious altitude, right? Since 1 and 4 represents the pressure at the same point, we can equate this to right to figure out the relation between real altitude and the fixtious altitude. Let us equate 1 and 4, right from equations 1 and 4 we have g d h g is equals to g naught d h this implies d h is equals to g by g naught dhg eh? now what is g by g naught
I'm erasing this part. What is G by G naught? So let us go back to this definition of absolute altitude. Right. Say we have our moon here, moon. Okay. This is our Earth, and moon, or you can also assume a satellite. There is a satellite revolving around this earth. Right. Now we have defined absolute altitude, which is the sum of geometric altitude and the radius. H and G. Right. So according to Newton's universal law of gravitation, the force of attraction between these two bodies is directly proportional to the product of their masses, where m is the mass of the satellite and capital M is be the mass of this earth, right? And inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them, right? That is HEA square, which is HG plus R square, right? So this equals to G M M by Hg plus r whole square, right? Am I correct? Now, let us bring the satellite onto onto the surface of this earth, right? What it becomes? Mg is equals to g m m by r square directly. Let this be g naught. This equals to g naught is equals to g m by r square, right? And g is equals to g m by r plus h g whole square. So we have equation number six and 7, right? So if you divide this equation 6 and 7, what you have is, yeah, this implies like 6, 7 by 6 implies g by g naught is equal to r square by r plus h g whole square. Now substitute this g by g naught in this equation. What you have is d h is equals to r square by r plus h g whole square into d h g. In, now integrate between your altitudes of interest, say from 0 to h and the corresponding limit for right hand side is 0 to h g. So by integrating that what I have is h is equals to r square into my, minus 1 by r plus h g from 0 to h g. Right? So this equals to r square by minus 1 by r plus h g minus 1 by r. Am I correct? So h is equals to, uh, sorry, yes r by r plus h g into h g. So this is the relation between fixtures altitude and 
real altitude there. This is my equation number 8. Now, why we are deriving this? Since we want to ease this integration, we have converted the actual hydrostatic equation, which is in terms of geometric altitude to a geopotential altitude, right? To an equation with geopotential altitude. Using this step 4 in equation number 3, what we have dp by p is equals to g naught into dh by rt minus g naught, right? Now, g naught is constant, right? It is on the surface of the earth, which is 9.81 meter per second square, the average value of g naught, right? Now, if I integrate this equation 9, so I will be able to figure out how the pressure varies with altitude, yeah. And then we will see how the density varies with altitude, right? Now, let us consider this layer, gradient layer, first layer. So, for gradient layer, right? So, dp by p, integrating it from p1 to p2 is equals to minus h1 to h2 g naught by rt into dh, right. Now, from the gradient layer, we have lapse rate, which is defined as dt by dh, right, okay. So, what is dh? dt by a. Using this, Substituting this here, what I have is H1 to H2 G0 by AR into dt. So, corresponding integration limits will also change to T1 to T2. Let T1 be the temperature at altitude 1, T2 be the temperature measured at altitude 2. Right. Now, in this equation, if you see the integration. A, a is constant for a particular gradient layer, right? R is constant, which is, which is R is 287 joule per kg Kelvin, kg Kelvin, right? And A for this first layer is about minus 6.5, the average value is minus 6.5 Kelvin per kilometer. This is the change in temperature once you move. If you, if you change 1 kilometer altitude, like if you move up, uh, if you travel 1 kilometer vertically up, then there is a drop of 6.5 Kelvin, right? So, now let us integrate this equation. What you have is ln of P2 by P1 is equals to minus G0 by AR into hmm, what we have done is RT, RT right, this is R into T. So, please make a correction here it is R, AR into T right. So, what we have here is G naught by AR into L naught. T2 by T1, this implies P2 by P1 is equals to T2 by T1 raised to the power of minus G0 by AR. Now, how to find out 
so now we got the variation of pressure right with altitude so if you if you know the lapse rate you will be able to find out what is t2 and if you know p1 that's a let us say if you are taking sea level condition you know sea level condition values at sea level right p is one atmosphere here what is at stp standard temperature and pressure is one atmosphere 1 point you 1325 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per meter square or pascal rho is 1.225 kg per meter cube and temperature is 288.16 kelvin We know the equation of state P is equals to P1 is equals to rho 1 R T1 at an altitude H1. We can also relate this, right? And we also have equation of state at altitude H2. Right? Now dividing these two equations, maybe 10 and 11. And 12. Right. Dividing these two equations, you have P2 by P1 is equals to rho 2 T2 by rho 1 T1. Okay. So, what is rho 2 by rho 1? Is P2 by P1 into T2 by T1 which is equals to T2 by T1. So, with the help of this equation say 10 right T2 by T1 rest raised to the power of minus G naught by A R plus 1 right ok. So, rho 2 by rho 1 is equals to T2 by T1 raised to the power of minus G naught by AR minus 1. This is your gradient layer relationship for density variation with altitude, right? So, this is your pressure variation with altitude and density this this equation number 13 talks about density variation with altitude, right? Fine. Now, for isothermal layer, so coming back to this equation, dP by P is equals to minus g naught by rt into dh right coming back to this equation in isothermal layer we observe that temperature remains constant with altitude right so what we can do we can uh, we can consider it as a constant t here is no more a variable we can treat it as a constant and integrate this to get ln of p2 by p1 from p1 to p2 from h1 to H2 is equals to minus G naught by RT into delta H. So, where delta H is equals to H2 minus H1. So, P2 by P1 is equals to e raised to the power of minus G naught by RT into delta H. So, by using this relationship again here, what we can see P2 by P1 is equals to rho 2 by rho 1 into T2 by T1, where T2 is equals to T1 in this case. That means P2 by P1 is equals to rho 2 by rho 1, which is equals to rho 2 by rho 1 for isothermal layer.
So if you know the initial conditions and the change in the altitude and the corresponding temperature of the isothermal layer, you will be able to find out what is the pressure here. Right? But we are interested in finding, uh, so mostly our flight is constrained to, we are looking for, uh, looking for uh, flight in the gradient layer. Right? So let us solve your problems related to uh, like uh, fi figuring out the velocity as well as, um, yeah, as well as pressure for this gradient layer, right? Okay. Let's rewrite these equations for gradient layer and isothermal layer. So gradient layer, we have T2 by P1 is equals to T2 by T1 raised to the power of minus G0 by a r, right, and rho 2 by rho 1 is equals to T2 by T1 raised to the power of minus G0 by A r plus 1. Okay. These two belongs to gradient layer and for isothermal layer, We have P2 by P1 is equals to e raised to the power of minus G0 by RT into delta H, right? So the same, same equation stands for rho 2 by rho 1, right? So where delta H is equals to H2 minus H1. So what are these T1, T2 and H1, H2 for gradient layer and isothermal layer? Like, so the sea level conditions are P1, T1 and rho 1 for gradient layer, whereas for each isothermal layer or each, each gradient layer, the end point of this first gradient layer will be the starting point of the isothermal layer. So you have to consider P1, rho 1, T1 for isothermal layer at 11 kilometers. Right. If you want to calculate uh, this, uh, this thermodynamic properties at say 20 kilometers altitude, then you have to consider uh, P1 rho 1 T1 at 11 kilometers altitude for isothermal layer. Now let us quickly uh, solve one or two examples. So, example 1. Consider a fixed wing UAV flying at an altitude of five kilometers. Right. with a velocity say stay of 30 meters per second okay find the corresponding total pressure measured by pitot tube. Right. So here uh, there is a UAV, fixed wing UAV flying at 5 kilometers altitude and cruising at a speed of 30 meters per second. Now we have to find out the corresponding pit, uh, total pressure measured by this pitot tube. So, how do we do this? So, as we know, 5 kilometers corresponds to gradient layer here, right? Now, what is the total pressure is equals to static pressure at 5 kilometers plus dynamic pressure with density at 5 kilometers altitude and the velocity of 30 meters per second. Given V is equals to 
30 meters per second right h is equals to 5 kilometers so here in the which is which in this case is delta h h g we have to note it down right now first we need to find out what is the static pressure at 5 kilometers and density at 5 kilometers altitude now by using this gradient layer equations before using that what we need to do we have to convert this delta h g to delta h right how we are going to do that we have delta h is equals to r into h g by r plus h g or h is equals to r into h g by r plus h g because h1 is 0 in this case right so r r here is approximately 6400 kilometers now at 5 kilometers altitude what is delta h how to find out geopotential altitude for the corresponding into hg is hg is what 5 kilometers 5 into 10 power 3 divided by 6400 plus 5 into 10 power 3 what is delta h or h is equals to how much <coughs> h is approximately 4.9961 kilometer right so what is the difference between this hg and h at 5 kilometers altitude it's hardly what is the difference between hg and h at 5 kilometers 5000 5, meters minus 4996.1 right 1 meters which is which is 3.9 meters So, so the difference is not much, it is just 4 meters of difference, right. Now, uh, so and so the result will also be not much affected by whether you convert this to delta H or delta H, right. Now, P2 is equals to or P at 5 kilometers is equals to P at sea level or say P at sea level, yes, P s is P at sea level multiplied by T 2 by T 1 raised to the power of minus G naught by A into R, right. This what is P at sea level? 288.16 Kelvin, pass, uh, sorry, yeah, 16 Kelvin, sorry, sorry, sorry. So, the pressure at sea level is 1 atmosphere 1.01325 into 10 power 5 Pascal multiplied by what is T2? Yeah. How to find T2? We have lapse rate for this first layer which is minus 6.5 into 10 power 3 Kelvin per meter which is equals to dH by dt right dt by dh dt by dh that is t2 minus t1 by h2 minus h1 this implies t2 is equals to t1 plus a into delta h so what is t2 in this case is 
T1 is 288.16 plus A here is minus 6.5 in 10 to the power of minus 3. Yeah, please correct here, it is 10 to the power of minus 3 Kelvin per kilometer into delta H is 5 into 10 power 3. So this turns out to be Two eighty eight point one two seven five Kelvin. So now substitute this value here two eighty eight point one two seven five divided by two eighty eight point one six raised to the power of minus nine point eight one divided by minus six point five into ten power of minus. 3 multiplied by 287 joule per kg Kelvin. Right? So, if you solve this equ equation, what you get is static pressure at 5 kilometers, which is equals to 53.75 kilo Pascal. kilo Pascal and the corresponding density at this altitude is what you can do is simply by you know equation of state which is P is equals to rho RT P at 5 kilometers is equals to rho at 5 kilometers R into T at 5 kilometers. So, you can directly solve this since you have P5 and T5. Otherwise, you can also use this equation like rho 2 rho at 5 kilometers by rho at sea level is equals to T at 5 kilometers by T at sea level raised to the power of minus 9.81 divided by minus 6.5 into 10 to the power of minus 3 into 287 plus 1. You can solve from either of these equations to get density at 5 kilometers, which is equal to 0.7324 kg per meter cube. Now that you have the density as well as the static pressure at 5 kilometers altitude, uh, so by substituting these two values in this equation and for a given velocity, you can find out the corresponding total pressure measured by the pitot stool. So, what will be that? P0 is equals to P8 5 kilometers plus half rho at 5 kilometers. What is V? V infinity square, which is yeah, V 30, 30 meters per second. Right. So, what is P at? It's 53.75 kilo Pascal plus 0.5 into 0.7324 into so, this is equals to 54.08 kilo Pascal. So, this is the pressure measured by the pitot tube which is installed in this UAV. Right, which is flying at 5 kilometers altitude at a speed of 30 meters per second. Now, take another example. Example 2. So, 
determine the cruise velocity of a wing alone UAV flying at an altitude of 10 kilometers right the pitot to measure <coughs> measures total pressure of 26.37 kilopascals So, in the first question it was like we need to find out the total pressure for the corresponding velocity right here. So, if we have this total pressure what will be the velocity of flight right. So, you can easily do it right it is it, but the difference is difference here is we are flying at 10 kilometers and still we are in gradient layer right. So, here V at uh, v velocity is equals to square root over twice the differential pressure right at 10 kilometers density at 10 kilometers. Now again consider the gradient layer equations where pressure at static pressure at 10 kilometers is equals to static pressure at sea level right, multiplied by T2 by T1 raised to the power of minus G0 by AR. So, the T2 here is T1 plus A into delta H which is T1 is 288.16 Kelvin plus what is A minus 6 point phi into 10 power of minus 3 into delta h is 10 into 10 power 3 kilometer. T2 is 223.26 Kelvin right. So, static pressure at 10 kilometers is 1.01325 into 10 power 5 into 223.26 divided by 288.16 is to minus 9.81 divided by minus 6.5 into 10 power minus 3 into 280. So, this equals to 26 point this equals to 26 point 19 kilo Pascals. So, we got the pressure static pressure at 10 kilometers. Now, let us find out the density at this altitude, right. So, we have from the equation of state pressure at 10 kilometers is equal to density at 10 kilometers r into T at 10 kilometers. So, we can easily find out what is the density at 10 kilometers from here. 
PA10 divided by R into PA10 which is equals to 0 0.40, 0 0.4087 kg per meter cube. Now substitute these two values here like we have P0 is given to us and we have P, P at uh, pressure, static pressure at 10 kilometers and we have density of air at 10 kilometers altitude. Now if we can substitute in this equation, twice 26.37 minus 26.19. And four three divided by point four zero eight seven. This one to be thirty meters per second approximately. Right. So that's a velocity at which this UAV is flying. If you, if the pitot is measuring twenty six point three seven kilopascals, right? If it is and it is mentioned that the UAV is flying at ten kilometers. So the velocity of the cruise velocity of this UAV is 30 meters per second. Okay. 